The title Boyhood came rather late in the process. We, we had other titles. Often we referred to it as the 12-year film, uh, Growing Up. But it was always, to me, a portrait of a family. But, Dad, I mean, why is it all on us, though? You know, what about you? How was your week? You know, who do you hang out with? Do you have a girlfriend? What have you been up to? I see your point. I mean, the story, to me, was sort of the best of both worlds. We had a very strong structure outlined. We knew the end. It was all, the architecture was there. But then using all the time we were allotted, you know, we shot this over 4,200 days. You know, we only really rolled the camera on about 40 of those days. So I had all that time to edit and think about it. So ultimately it comes down to it's 12 different scripts for each year because we're collaborating with not only the culture and the changing world, but, you know, each cast member is getting a year older. So it was... I always knew it would slowly, incrementally go where they went, in particular Eller's character. You know, everything that the characters would go through, I was just kind of asked to relate to my own experience and you know, use that to inform what the character was going through. But it was fun. As Eller got older, the, um, he was just that much more of a collaborator by the end of the movie. But, but you know, let's say at least halfway through, you know, he, I'm working with him the same way I'd work with Patricia Arquette or Ethan Hawke. You know, we would talk about scenes. Oh, there's a campfire scene between father and son. What are we talking about? You know, the whole Star Wars reference was something he was actually thinking a lot about at that moment. So we made the scene about that. You think they ever will make another Star Wars? I don't know. I mean, I think if they were to make another one, that the period where this game is set is where it would have to be. Because there's nothing after, really. Yeah. No, we're the Jedi, the it's end. over. There's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing else to do there. You know, you can turn Han Solo but... into a Sith Lord. And... <laughs> yeah, what are you gonna do? <laughs> but it was it was wonderful, wonderful process. But it was kind of like feeling your way through it. But we had that time, so we would often be getting the exact dialogues relatively late, maybe the night before. But the truth is, we've been thinking about the scene for years and knew the right moment was coming. But we had to live through it and act it and age to it to get it just right. So it wouldn't have been very productive to oh stick with something we wrote 12 years before because that that was no longer relevant. What was relevant was how everyone had developed and how it all felt and trying to get it just just right. The dialogues at the end of 12 years going through it, I can tell you exactly why no one's done it. But it is a very simple idea. It's an interesting way to tell a story. It's, it's, it, I think in narrative filmmaking, there's still a lot of possibilities, particularly in the area of time and storytelling, that there are new narratives to be told and stories to be you know, rendered in, in interesting ways that aren't typical. But I know why no one's done this. It's, it's kind of a leap, kind of a leap of faith. Documentaries are one thing, but to kind of tr control the elements and do that, it, it was something else. But you know, if this triggers anything in, in anyone to take on a story like that, I, th I think that would be great. It won't be exactly this, but it'll be some version of this. That's how, that's how things move forward, you know? I hope people would just kind of have to relate it kind of by definition to their own lives, their own relationships with their siblings, with their parents, with their children, if they're, you know, if they're parents. So I, I just think it's kind of, it wants to be, wants you to be examining your own life.